It's great, great. Hello, everyone. Wow, what a crowd. I'm John Quinones. You know that TV show, What Would You Do, right? <laughs> you know, and um, my TV show is all about, with those hidden cameras, it's all about speaking out against injustice. Uh, what do you do when you come face to face with bullying, with racism, with discrimination, with gay bashing, spousal abuse, uh, separating families on the US-Mexican border? What do you do when you witness that kind of injustice? And the little voice in the back of your head says, do something. Do you step in or do you step away? That's what the show is all about. But this evening, we don't have to ask these remarkable people, what would you do? Because we know what they've done, right? We know what they would do, and they've been doing it since that awful day, February 14th. You guys are true heroes and are a beautiful inspiration to the rest of the world. Thank you for being here. Now, four months ago, you all went through a profound and unimaginable experience, and you chose to react with action and activism. How can we inspire other young people in this audience to become involved in causes that speak to them? How do you do it? I mean, a cause doesn't have to affect you personally for you to jump in and make a change. We've been traveling around the country and talking to other young people whose communities haven't been touched by gun violence, and they put themselves in our place as if they were our friends at that school that day, and they're on board with our message. And that's exactly how you create change. You create a network of young people that are fighting for the same cause, whether it be us in Parkland or kids from Chicago, Baltimore, Los Angeles. Every single place in this country needs to unite in order to make the difference. You don't have to live through that. No. Awful experience. You shouldn't. You shouldn't have to. That's live. exactly what we're fighting for. Exactly. Is for everybody else to not have to experience this. Okay. How did you, as a group, mobilize this wonderful organization, a movement that you have, March for Our Lives. What did the process look like to you? Well, um, I only jumped in on the 17th of February when I gave that speech that went all over the place really, really quickly. Went viral on Twitter. I don't, didn't even have a Twitter. Had to make a Twitter a week <laughs> later. I was like, I guess I can't ignore this anymore. Um, but so we, I ended up on Cameron's floor, so did like, half of the other people that I knew, some people I never knew. I never knew Jackie before all this. You and really I, didn't? I no. I never saw her on school. We have 3,000 kids at her school. Mm -hmm. It's a large place. But you know, we, Cameron got us all on his living room floor, and he said, this is what we're doing. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to, but this is what we're doing, and we all stayed. Yeah, I know personally, the day after, less than 24 hours after, I was already on the phone with um, Florida senators and organizing a protest in Tallahassee, so that was the day after. Immediately. I, immediately, because I knew if I didn't act immediately, then nothing was gonna be done and no one would listen. If I, I reacted with activism instead of <coughs> tears, even though I was still grieving, mm -hmm. people would listen. I think that we all, as a collective, even in that school, even before we all met up after everything, we knew that <coughs> um, if we didn't act, then this would have just gone away in a week, like it has so, how it has in the past, because we grew, we grew up seeing, you know, Sandy Hook, Las Vegas, yeah. Charleston, Pulse, these shootings that happen, and then in a week they disappear, and we knew that we couldn't let that happen to us. I know better than anyone that the news cycle is never ending, right? Twenty-four hour news cycles. How do you keep that momentum going, both physically? Because you guys have been in what, three states in one day yeah. this week? I was yesterday. How do you keep that momentum going both physically and, and on point with your message? I mean, for me, traveling around to these places, we are meeting with other gun violence survivors, and their stories propel us to keep going because it's not just about Parkland anymore. It's not just about the 17 people we lost, even though that's how it started. It's about every single story we hear on our on our road to change and forever. Mm -hmm. There are some stories that never get told. And we knew that our story would be told, but we had to make sure that it was still being told as it progressed because at the end of the day, we go home to our lives that continue after this tragedy and the media moves on to something else. Yeah. Those kids 
that survived Sandy Hook still walk through their schools every day, mm -hmm. even after what's happened. And the media doesn't pay attention to that. They don't pay attention to the aftermath as much as they should. I know. I've, been, I've covered stories where we descend upon a community and all the satellite trucks are there, you know, it's crazy mm -hmm. and mayhem, and then a week later, they're gone. Uh, you have to figure out how to capitalize on that momentum. Mm -hmm. And you did it very well. You told people, we got to act now, right? We wanted to make Jacqueline? sure the right story was being told, and the only people to do that were us. How has your view of civic responsibility changed for all of you? Has it? Has it? I personally, when I was growing up, um, every 4th of July, my mom, before handing me a sparkler, would say, when you're 18, you're going to vote, right? Promise that. <laughs> and I was like, yes, mommy, yes, can I have my sparkler now? And, and it worked. I would, I've always been looking forward to the first day that I can vote. And as soon as I turned 18, I was like, yes, not only can I buy sham wows off of TV, I can vote. And I'm ready to go. I'm ready to do this. <laughs> but like, you know, when, when we inspire that need in other people, it just always horrified me that so many people were like, I'm just not going to vote in this election. And I was like, do you really feel so disenfranchised that your voice doesn't matter? And now we've seen that it's all these corporations, it's all these organizations that are purposefully doing that, trying to make sure that young people do not get what they deserve. So many people have this idea that the government is broken, so there's no need to vote. Right. But the, but the need to vote is so strong because the government is broken and we need to fix it. We need to be the people that are going to stand up. Absolutely. Yeah, and when it comes to civic duties, we were fortunate enough to grow up in a place where there are civics classes in middle school and high school. And that are required for graduation. Right. And I never realized before this that a lot of places don't have civics classes, and that needs to be implemented in every single school in this country. Yeah, absolutely. What does being an American citizen mean to you now? Now, it means that the duties of a citizen should be equivalent to the responsibilities, because voting is a responsibility, it's not a duty, even though it is in other countries but voting should be just as important as paying your taxes, in my opinion, because the people in power are, are affecting your life every single day, and politics should be a part of every single person's everyday lives. They need to educate themselves on what these people are doing because it affects them every day. The people in power haven't been doing anything on this issue, and a lot of issues, mm -hmm. and they keep getting reelected. And they, they think, you know, if I keep doing nothing and keep getting reelected, well, I'm going to continue to do nothing because it seems to work for me. Mm -hmm. And we need to say, no, you need to take action. It's time to change things because it's gone on for too long. It's part of the march. You go to Washington. You take on these congressmen, U.S. senators. Wasn't it intimidating? I know one of my friends actually went to one of the representative senators, um, people in, in Tallahassee on the trip that Jackie organized and one of the guys there said, you know, she was like, I have all of this research that I looked up on the bus ride over. It was a 12 hour bus ride and I have two pages of research, mister. <laughs> and he was like, wow, you know, I don't, I, I, I've never known all this information, wow. And she was like, I'll give you 20 minutes. You can, uh, you can research it too. It really didn't take that long. It's a quick Google away, how to stop gun violence, <laughs> right there on Google. And, um, and there's, they were actually really incredibly insensitive people. They were talking about, like, you know, they had visited the school, and they were like, I saw the blood and guts on the walls. And it's like, how could you be so disgustingly cruel? These are the people we elected. These are the people that we trust with our everyday decisions, the, the, the things that are going to affect us for the rest of our lives. Everybody says that there's, a, there's an 80% dissatisfaction with Congress, but there's a 90% incumbency rate. Mm. And that's pathetic. You are part, yes, of course. You are uh, proud to be an American. You're, you're, your father's Cuban, mm -hmm. you're part Hispanic. Did that factor in to your um, view of the world? Yeah. Well, I am loud, that's true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I do have a lot of pride yeah. for various aspects of my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's a lot of things in my life that push me to be more active. Yeah. Like, the environment and LGBT rights, which are incredibly important. And like, I would say probably more my LGBT side of me was pushing me forward of like speaking out and speaking up. Like, you gotta throw the first shoe at Stonewall to get pride going. So like, you gotta That's speak right. up. 
So the movement, the movement is not just about violence in schools anymore. Mm -mm, not at all. I mean, we were just in Chicago a couple days ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we met with um, some kids from St. Sabina and the Peace Warriors and Brave. And they experience this type of senseless violence every single day. And the media never shows up. I was talking to one of my friends from Chicago. And he said, we had a press conference this time last year after our peace march. And no press showed up. Hmm. Isn't that embarrassing? It's, it's the same pain they felt as we, as we have felt. You know, it's, it's the same exact pain. It's a death of a person that is loved and cherished by their community. And it's not just mass shootings, it's everyday violence. It's police violence as well. We were just in Ferguson as well, talking to Mike Brown Sr. It's, it's all encompassing this movement. You, your community is a well-off community. Predominantly, the leaders of this uh, movement are, are white young kids, a little wealthier. Do you think if this had happened in an inner city school, as awful as it is, but predominantly Hispanic or black, they would have gotten the same media attention? No, because it's happened before. They've never shown up for them. Yeah. They probably never will, unless we keep speaking up. I, I, I do want to say one thing to your point about people in the movement being predominantly white. And I think that what a lot of people misinterpret is that the only reason we are here today is because we were in each other's phone contacts. Yeah. It wasn't that we are, you know, there are plenty of, of, of people of color, black people, Hispanic people, Asian people at our school that are being active and that are using their voices. And I believe that the media and everyone else needs to pay attention to them as well because they, are, they survived the same thing we survived. Yes. They are just as important as we are and no one's voice should be quieter than anyone else's. I do want to point out though that like, we have a lot of LGBT kids in our organization. Yeah. Like, I've never seen another organization that has, other than if it's an LGBT organization specifically, I've never seen so many LGBT kids working side by side. We sometimes have like the gay couch, where like all the, all the girls, <laughs> sorry, all the LGBT girls hang out on the couch. It's a really fun time. So it's diverse, it is diverse. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are there other youth-led movements that in your mind are sparking real change these days? Yeah, I mean, we are going to Standing Rock in a few days, actually, and we met people from an indigenous youth council just a couple weeks ago. They, a few years ago, and still today, even though the media doesn't cover them all the time, they're sparking real change in their community every single day. And we have met people from Black Lives Matter. We just went to Ferguson, as I mentioned before. Yeah. That is still, a, racism is still alive, and people just don't focus on Ferguson anymore because that happened in 2014. Listen, I do a show called What Would You Do? We, we know every Friday night we see this. Mm -hmm. To the younger audience here, what advice do you have for them to get involved, to get motivated, and to use their voice to ignite civic culture? Vote. Register to vote and yeah. actually go through with it. And if you can't vote yet, there are still so many things you can do in your school. You can create a club. You can advocate for a civics class if you don't already have one. It's, and you, you can, can register other people to vote yeah. in your community. You can ask people in your family. Like, mm -hmm. if you have like a person in your family who would vote against something that you desperately need, like healthcare or LGBT rights, tell them to vote in your favor because you deserve that just as much as they want to take it away from you. I mm -hmm. think another thing that's important is to remain educated on issues. You know, watch the news, read stuff on online that you find credible because at the end of the day, you know. We experienced this, so that's when we decided to look up stuff. But if I had known all this stuff beforehand, mm -hmm. I would have been out there the day of and getting ready and, and lobbying because this is such an important issue in our country that needs to be, it needs to be resolved as soon as possible. And the minute that we get as many young people as possible and, and, st and standing with us mm -hmm. and being a unified front and saying we need to end this, that's when things will finally change. And not just that, but when we need young leaders in office too. Mm -hmm. We need 18 year olds around the country to run for city commissioner. Yeah, all one, of our, like, one of our friends is running for city commissioner, sorry. Oh. So that's. How old is this person? 18. 18. All right. As soon as you turn 18. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe running political office in one of your futures, do you think? I have the heart to not be a politician. <laughs> <laughs> Like You're president of the junior class? And now senior class. All right. <laughs> um, Politics? 
I don't know. I may study poli sci in college, but you know, <laughs> I, I, we'll we'll see. I don't even know what I'm going to do two months from now, let alone ten years from now. You yeah. know. <laughs> that was going to be my final question. What is uh, what's next in your in your journey, um, Alex? You know, going back to school. Going to be a senior next year, and I'm. Never been more excited, honestly, to go back to school. Mm -hmm. What do you think the victims of this awful tragedy would think of what you guys are doing? I well, think we live with them. They tell us what they think, you know? Yeah, and a lot of the victims' families have been living their legacies for them, appropriately so. And, um, for example, Joaquin Oliver's dad paints murals around the country and that's exactly what Joaquin would have wanted, as Manuel says. And so they, they might have died, but their spirits didn't. Yeah, absolutely. What were you showing us? Oh, um, the bracelet is Change the Ref. That's the organization. Um, it was modeled after a story, but obviously we ran out of time, so I don't want to have to run late. Well, I know that whatever you choose to do, you'll be a tremendous success because you speak from the heart, and that's what it's all about. How about these kids, huh? How about a great hand? Thank you so much. Thank you for the